Hi everyone, Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Look, it's uh, half past three in the morning UK time. My body clock is completely turned around. So I'm going to have to try and be calm and rational and uh, keep the old voice down. Not get as animated as normally do. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, but it might prove to be difficult, but here goes. So I go to bed, right? As I said, body clock is all over the place. I'm sort of on UK West Coast time <laughs> at the moment. Maybe Australian time. I'm not too sure right now. And I get up, and the first thing I see all over my timeline is another Marvel writer has opened their mouth, insulted a customer in the biggest crisis that the mainstream comic industry has had, I think, at least in 70 years. But who cares, hey? And, not just that, they insult, the tweet stays up for hours upon hours, but if you discuss it, he'll block you. Because these people are stunning and brave. And by stunning and brave, of course, I mean abject cowards. They're the reason the industry is in the mess that it's in. But let's just get to it. So I'm taking this from Bounding Into Comics uh, because it's still got the tweet up in it. Marvel Comics writer Jerry Duggan tells comic fan to eat a bag of pre- <laughs> dicks so let's just pan down to the actual the thing is right what kicked it all off actually i've got to go into this what kicked it all off is this is a a, a tweet by newsarama which is reporting the the upcoming july marvel event the awesome marvel event do you know what the awesome marvel event is everybody gets a sword Everybody gets a sword. <laughs> the oh god. We've had the new Warriors announcement. Then we had Children of the Atom announcement. Uh I'm missing one. Then it was announced yesterday that a main character in Hulk is going to be trans. And I'm just thinking to myself, none of it means anything. None of it means anything. It has no impact. It has no worth or value whatsoever. Because this is all that you do. You just virtue signal and virtue signal and virtue signal. When you're introducing characters now, you have to give their sodding pronouns, pronouns and sexualities before you even get on to what they are as a character. Not that there's any depth there either. New characters, folks. They're shit, but new characters. New characters, folks. Well, actually, they're not. They're just carbon copies of the characters whose sidekicks they're meant to be. Cro crazy bios. One has a TikTok. One has an Instagram. There's the... Oh, fucking hell. So, it doesn't matter. Announce that they're gay. Announce that they're trans. It doesn't matter. It's meaningless. It has no impact. No one cares. Because this is your go-to. You're just interested in virtue signal. You're not just interested in actually producing good comics. You should build up a character first before you even decide, most likely, uh, sexuality, colour, stuff like that. You know, sure, get a gender because you're probably, you know, I'm going to deal a male character, I'm going to deal with a female character. But build up the character first. But no, you don't. You build up the virtue first, the signal first, then you do this. So anyway, that kind of went a little bit of a tangent. But everyone gets a sword. Who could possibly give a flying fuck? Who could care? Oh, Wolverine gets a sword. He's got 
adamantium claws. Ah, don't want to use these. I've got a sword. <laughs> because the crossover said so. Because the special event said I've got a swordsy wordsy. I'm going to swoosh it. Oi, oi, ve. So, an independent artist puts this tweet from this guy from the office, Nate from the office, just rolling his eyes. Quite understandably, because this sounds like dog shit. People are sleeping. Dog shit. That's what it sounds like. A pathetic, meaningless crossover of it. I'm a crossover man. Buy 58 comics where people are holding a sword. Oh, shut up. So anyway, freelancer, <laughs> Jerry Duggan, 70 years of age, loves his Twitter. Maybe you should take up gardening, Jerry. Something like that, eh? Or maybe you should take up shutting the fuck up. That might also help. Uh, chimes in. Nothing to do with him. Uh, Nate, wishing you success on your continuing journey outside comics. <laughs> Jerry, something tells me this tweet is going to age real badly. Really badly. Really, really badly indeed. Hashtag pencils down. <gasps> we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. So anyway, he causes a ruckus. Cause he call, course he causes a ruckus. And then uh, somebody calls him an arsehole. <laughs> he is. I mean, he is. But somebody says it. So uh, Jerry, of course, replies with, Eat a bag of pre-fucked dicks. Bear in mind, it was Jerry that inserted himself into this situation. Nobody... Atted him in. Nobody brought him into this. He brought himself into this conversation of his own volition. Was antagonistic. And then he got people barking back at him. And then... <laughs> so anyway. I'm just compiling stuff to create a video about this. And I'm discussing it with, with Geeky Candy on Twitter. And we're just trying to work out what the hell pre-fucked dicks actually are. So we're just bantering back and forth with these stupid tweets. So I go back to creating the video. And lo and behold, uh, Jerry has blocked me now. <laughs> Jerry, who said to a customer... Eat a bag of pre-fucked dicks. Me, who had nothing, no interaction with Jerry whatsoever, all I did was discuss his pre-fucked dicks. Blocks me. And deletes his tweet. <sighs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Number one, look... There were loads of people talking about this. It's not just me. Uh, I think there's probably videos up about it already, no doubt. I'm sure uh, people who were awake while I was asleep while this was going on have already jumped on there. Uh, I could probably see one from Yellow Flash right now. I could probably see one, from, I don't know, maybe from uh, uh, Nerd Roddick or, or whatever. They might already have videos up about this. Most likely. <laughs> so anyway... Let's just let's just jump to some more Marvel writers. Now, Donny doesn't say anything particularly aggressive. He's not being aggressive or anything like that. But he does stress, this is a few days ago, four days ago. Comics are not cancelled. Comics will still be made and you will still read comics. Even if I take this as a little bit naive, everyone who's talking about the death of the comic industry is talking about mainstream comic books they're talking about the direct market nobody's talking about this nobody's talking about crowdfunding on indiegogo nobody's talking about this sort of stuff nobody's talking about this is gonna die 
$410,000 with still 19 days left to run on the campaign. Nobody's talking about this as dead. Quick little comics that are actually being created based off the current situation going on in the world right now with just one singular solitary perk to select, to support. Getting in there, creating something very topical, great artwork, great cover, looks interesting, boom. Nobody's talking about that, Donny. Everybody is talking about the direct market. Everyone's talking about your Jerry Duggans telling people to eat pre-fucked dicks. Everyone's talking about your Mark Wades and your Gail Simones who have been disgusting on Twitter and the way that they treat the customer for years, amongst many, many others. People are discussing how that you're not hiring based on talent anymore, that you claim that you want diversity, but you don't want diversity of thought because anyone who doesn't fall on the far left extreme fringe of your crazy industry right now has to either shut up and keep quiet, lest they be exposed and removed from the business, or hashtag change your politics. So, this isn't technically correct. We're talking about the mainstream industry, and the mainstream industry is on the verge of utter collapse. Things may change, they always do, always have, and we've always been here. Everyone would excelsior. So blasé. So blasé. Don't worry, we'll get by, we'll survive. Don't worry about all the comic stores going out of business. Don't worry about all those people losing their livelihoods because we keep sending them unsellable trash. Month after month, saturate their shelves with unsellable trash. Then, on his reply to his own tweet, then he has to say, oh, I'll add this here too, okay. I think it's, is it a day later? Yeah, a day later. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about those comic book shops. I promise you, no one wants comic shops and Diamond to be healthy and thriving more than me. Well, it took you a day to actually realise what you had said. Probably took you a lot of uh, flack from people saying, well, what about comic stores closing down? What about Diamond ceasing to distribute? DC, they've shut down their presses. Who has not said a word still, Jim Lee? This industry is flaccid. That's what this industry is. It's got no leadership whatsoever. It's The asylum is being run by the inmates. The crazy screaming voices that we hear that are blackmailing people emotionally because if you dare to get rid of them, then you're attacking their diversity. This is why you never capitulate to this sort of behaviour ever. This is why you always operate off the meritocracy because the meritocracy is fair. It doesn't discriminate. So if you've got talent, perfect. And that talent doesn't care where you come from, your background, or any of that. But when you hire based off diversity, you let yourself open because you're now beholden to these people. Because if you dare try to get rid of them, oh no, you've gone and done it. <sighs> it's my life, it's how I feed my family. Well, Donny, I think you're going to have to find a new way. Or, I mean, Donny's he's not being antagonistic. I'm not, I'm not trying to have a go at Danny on a personal level. I'm trying to say it's very tone deaf and blasé with what he's saying here. I can't control or fix this. No. I'm just a pat on the shoulder and a hug right now. We're all in this together. I understand what he's trying to say, but, but Donny, Marvel... DC are trying it as well, but Marvel in particular, they have pushed themselves into this corner by their own volition. 
and they're getting everything that they deserve. C.B. Sabolski. <sighs> impotent. Impotent leadership here. Absolutely impotent. Uh, Marvel put out a tweet about um, comics, obviously. <laughs> Many comic shops around the world are open and selling comics. Find new and different ways to get books into fans' hands. Please support your local comic shop. Why didn't you support them, C.B. Sobolski? Why didn't you support them? By giving them something they could fucking sell. Instead of all this saturated shite, let's go for the 8th, ninth, 10th attempt at Captain Marvel. Let's redo America Chavez again, even though she doesn't sell. Let's keep the diversity people on board who haven't proven themselves in sales whatsoever. Title after title after title, and then throw it into the comic book shops. Again, you are the reason for your own downfall. Not the customer. Not the customer one bit. But you want to say, hey, support your local comic book shops. Well, guess what? It starts and ends, really, with you putting the product there. Because if you put the product, good product, product that people actually want to buy out there, guess what? They'll buy it. They will buy it. Just think, this is an Indiegogo campaign. These are little Indiegogo campaigns by individuals. Just imagine what they would sell with the support of a massive company behind them. But no, because that's not your politics. Because for all your screaming and shouting about diversity this and diversity that, the one thing you don't want is diversity of thought. And by having diversity of thought, you come to a more centrist area, which makes the comic a lot more interesting and available for everybody. So don't preach about supporting comic book shops when you don't support your comic book shops. And then I have to bring this up because it's in hilarious. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver, the, the Bane, he, he lives in the head of mainstream comics because he is doing things like this. Selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth in just one comic. Setting up different goals. Pick a, pick a goal, pick a target, pick a huge target, pick a much more affordable target. But still, even as an affordable target, these are colossally more expensive than a mainstream off-the-shelf comic and yet 400,000 plus dollars in sales with 19 days left in the head of the industry he's an ist he's a phobe he's an ism he's a fascist all this kind of stuff why because he's just creating a comic that people want to read. He's just creating a, an action-based, non-political comic. And so they have to try and tear him down. They have to try and pull everything down. But what? Guess what? Oh, your G. Willow Wilson. Oh, what a lovely person she is. We'll just end that there before I could get into it. And she tweets out, just got the first of the dreaded pencils down. They create their own, they create their own hashtags for us. God bless them. <laughs> just got the first of the dreaded pencils down emails. Imagine there will be more. It was inevitable after the store closures and diamond announcements, sending love to all my comic book. I'm not relishing the fact that people are going to be out of work. But I am relishing the fact that the right people should start getting out of work. And then just maybe, maybe if the comic book industry, if the mainstream industry does manage to get through this, if this current situation blows over quicker than we expect, and it's not looking like it will, but let's just say it does and it ends sooner rather than later and the comic book industry manages just to get back on its feet again, then I hope 
that when it comes to picking up pencils, that the mainstream marketplace, which I'll just tell you right now, of course they won't. Of course they won't. Because they're run by buffoons. They're run by people who want to push a specific ideology. So why would you have a diversity of thought when that's your goal? But you would hope that they would actually reach out to your Chuck Dixons and stuff like that as well. Who could write the shit out of a comic today. Just like he was doing 30 years ago. But they won't. And we all know they won't. And so the, the hashtag of pencils down gets created. Every time you see a comic book writer in the mainstream having to go at customers, hashtag pencils down. Because that's the email that they should be getting. Maybe that's why our friend Jerry decided to uh, delete his tweet. Maybe that's why he decided to. Maybe he was a bit concerned about getting his pencils down email. These people aren't fit to be in the mainstream industry. And they're not fit to be in it. Privileged people. Disgusting people. So there we go, folks. Kel Surprise. The mainstream comic industry, which is falling apart, exposes and shows everybody exactly why it is falling apart utter contempt for their audience an ineffectual pathetic ballless spineless leadership and that does go in quotation marks so i hope you enjoyed the vid <laughs> if you did do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media and twitch for live streaming links they're in the description box down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.